And good morning. Good to see you this morning here at Farmington Baptist Church. Glad you could join us for the uh, 11 o'clock service. If you would, stand up and uh, help us sing. We're going to start with uh, one of those old ones called Do Lord. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Way beyond the blue. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. While he's calling you. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Way beyond the blue. Amen, amen. Good start this uh, this morning. Good to uh, see you here. Good to see some uh, visitors and some familiar faces uh, here this morning. All right, let's continue on with one of the old Fanny Crosby songs, Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst at my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest, I am my Savior and happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. You can be seated for just a moment. Brother Ben will come up and make the morning announcements for us.
in the Lord's house today and appreciate you being with us. Hope you're able to find a bulletin there in your pews and to look around. You should be able to find one, lots of things inside. Really good article worth reading on the front of the bulletin. Uh, interesting story uh, about two men that died the same year, so that's really, a, and, and we'll encourage you uh, there on the front, so make sure and read that. Uh, remember Kids Camp. We've got 20-something children and adults at Kids Camp this week and uh, lots of good reports coming back from Kids Camp uh, with the young people that are there and Today, this morning, will be their last service. They'll be coming home, uh, so remember them. Pray for safety as they head back, but they've had a really uh, good weekend. And Miss Heidi is there and several adults and uh, young people. So remember all those who are at kids' camp uh, today. Uh, a few other things. There are several sign-up sheets back in the uh, foyer where the youth are going to Holiday World on the uh, 10th. Brother Jamie said to, that's uh, this weekend, right? Uh, so this morning is the deadline to sign up or tonight. So you let Brother Jamie know if uh, you've got any questions about that, but be sure and sign up if you're going to go. Today's the uh, the deadline, and then Miss Alicia's got a sign up sheet for the ladies' uh, potluck and uh, uh, ceramics uh, back in the uh, uh, four years. Well, you can see her if you've got any questions about that. So lots of things there in the bulletin. Remember that. Remember our Wednesday night study. Really enjoying that. Uh, the book First Steps for New Christians by Paul Chapel. Uh, come out and be a part of that. You'll really enjoy that on Wednesday night. So all these things that are going on. We're proud you're here. Let's pray and ask the Lord to uh, bless us and give us a great day in the Lord's house today. Brother Jesse, won't you pray for us, brother, if you will, this morning? All right, if you would, uh, stand, stand back up with us and help us continue to sing and worship the Lord in song. My life is in you, Lord. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you. I will praise you with all of my life. I will praise you with all of my strength. With all of my life. With all of my strength. All of my hope is in you. My life is in you lord my strength is in you lord my hope is in you lord in you it's in you my life is in you lord my strength is in you lord my hope is in you lord in you it's in you it's in you Amen. Miss uh, Christina and uh, Thomas are going to bring our special for us here in, uh, in just a moment. Uh, really a, a great song uh, that I think you're, you'll, you'll enjoy. All right, let's finish up this morning with a song called His Name is Life. His name is Master, Savior, Lion of Judah, Blessed Prince of Peace, Shepherd, Fortress, Rock of Salvation, Lamb of God is He. His name is Master, 
Savior, Lion of Judah, blessed Prince of Peace, Shepherd, Fortress, Rock of Salvation, Lamb of God is He. You can be seated. Christine and I are going to sing Scars in the Hands of Jesus. But before we sing, I need... Christine is getting ready to go on vacation next week. And she's got a bad knee, so we need to pray for her. That she can get a shot somewhere and make her knee better. But I w want you to listen to the words of this song. It's a special song. If I had only known the last time would be the last time, I would have put off all the things I had to do. I would have stayed a little longer, held on a little tighter. Now what I'd give for one more day with you. Cause there's a wound here in my heart where something's missing And they tell me that it's gonna heal with time But I know you're in a place where all your wounds have been erased And knowing yours are healed or healing mine The only scars in heaven they won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken All the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down Is the only scars in heaven are on the hands that hold you now. I know the road you walked was anything but easy. You picked up your share of scars along the way. But now you're standing in the sun You fought your fight and your race is run The pain is all a million miles away The only scars in heaven They won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Are on the hands that hold you now Hallelujah the hands that hold you now. There's 
not a day goes by that I don't see you. You live on in all the better parts of me. Until I'm standing with you in the sun, I'll fight this fight and I'll race, I'll run. Until I finally see what you can see. Oh, the only stars in heaven, they won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken. All the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Are on the hand to hold you now All right, wonderful song. We appreciate uh, Brother Thomas and Miss Christina singing for the Lord this morning. That goes right along with the sermon uh, that we have today. We appreciate the uh, good song. We're going to be in the book of Revelation, last book in the Bible, final book uh, there, the book of Revelation uh, in the singular. A lot of times we'll say Revelations, but it doesn't have an S on it. The book of Revelation, chapter number 14, one verse this morning, verse number 13. Revelation chapter number 14 and verse number 13 is we want to think about the Christian's Labor Day. The Christian's Labor Day. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13, a familiar verse. Uh, I've used it many times in funeral sermons. Revelation 14 and verse 13. The Bible says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the good day you've given us. Lord, we're thankful for the rain uh, that you've blessed us with. And uh, Father, thankful for all our young people that had a, such a great week, the children at kids camp. And I pray you'd bless them and keep them safe as they travel back home. And Lord, now we pray for our service today. Lord, we know that the arm of flesh can accomplish nothing. We pray that the Spirit would be here. The Spirit and the Word of God would go forth, speak to people's hearts. May Jesus be lifted up. In His name we pray. All right, the Christian's Labor Day. Of course, tomorrow is uh, Labor Day, and we think about that. It's a day uh, many of the young people will be sleeping in, no school. Um, a day of get-togethers and cookouts, and uh, if it doesn't rain, maybe trade day and other things. But as we think about the Christian's Labor Day, great verse. The Bible says, one day we'll rest from our labors. We're going to think about that. We're going to break this verse into three parts. You can put your ribbon right here. And... Uh, uh, three U's, if you will, this morning, if you're taking notes. I want you to see, number one, the unique truth. The unique truth. The Bible says blessed, but it doesn't say blessed are the dead. It says blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. You ought to underline that phrase in your Bible, in the Lord. That unique truth. The ones who are blessed are the ones who die in the Lord. So we see, number one, we'll see that unique truth. I want you to see, number two, there's an urgency. The Bible says one day we'll rest from our labors. But that's not true yet. There's an urgency right now that we might have labor for the Lord. And then finally, uh, we see there's an unforeseen fact. I struggle with three U's. So there's an unforeseen fact. A thing a lot of us don't think about or realize but the Bible says our works follow us to heaven. 
So we're just going to break the verse into three parts and to look at this one verse this morning. Let's think about it. So first of all, the unique truth. Again, I'd encourage you to underline those three words that, that in the Lord. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. The ones who are blessed, the ones John is writing about, are, are the ones who have died in the Lord. No, those three words put together, they're used 72 times in the Old Testament, 46 times in the New Testament. The question is, how does one get in the Lord? Many other times the Bible uses that phrase, in Christ. Those who are in Christ, in Jesus. But the question, how does somebody get in the Lord? How do you become, how do you get that relationship where you can say, Brother Ben, I know this morning that I'm in Christ. I'm in the Lord. Some would say you get in the Lord through works. Well, if you join the church, that's enough to put you in Christ, in the Lord. If I give some money to the church, my money will get me in Christ, in the Lord. If I live a good life, if my good works outweigh my... But none of those things. The Bible is very clear in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible says, not 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 of works lest any man should boast if we were saved by money in heaven we'd be able to say well look I gave a bunch of money that's what I did that's why I'm here if we were saved by joining the church we could say I was smart enough to join that church if our good works we'd be able to say well I had more good works than out of we could boast but the Bible says we're saved not of works some would say well we get in Christ through the ordinances. We get in Christ through the sacraments. We get in Christ through baptism. That being baptized puts you into Jesus. But no, no, the thief on the cross never got wet one bit and Jesus looked to him and said, today you'll be saved. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Now I know people will say, well, Brother Ben, preacher, that was before Pentecost. But it wasn't before baptism. John was baptizing. Uh, Jesus' disciples, the church that was started there in the Gospels was baptized. It wasn't, ba wasn't before baptism. Baptism doesn't put us into Christ. Well, Brother Ben, what about that phrase in Acts 2.38 where the Bible says we're baptized for remission of sins. It's just like when, when you're watching a Western and you see there on that Western it says Billy the Kid wanted for murder. Is Billy the Kid wanted so they can murder him or is he wanted because he committed murder? He's wanted because, and that's what it's talking about. We're baptized because our sins have been forgiven. Our sins have been remiss. So, no, it's not good works. It's not the church. It's not our money. We're not saved by any of those things. None of those things. The ordinances put us in Christ. Some even today say, if you're sincere... If you'll just be sincere, you can sincerely follow Muhammad, you can sincerely follow Buddha, you can sincerely follow this, or, as long as you're sincere. But I want to tell you, you might want to write in the margin this verse. Jesus said this in John chapter 9 and verse number 4. Or excuse me, John chapter 10, and I'll come to John 9, 4 in a second. John 10 and verse 9, I want you to write that one down too. But John 10 and verse 9, John chapter 10 and verse 9, Jesus said, I am the door. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. What Jesus was saying is, listen, your house may have a side door. Your home might have a back door, but heaven ain't got one. There's only one door to heaven. Jesus said, I am the door, the one and only door. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but my me. How does somebody get in Christ? We get in Christ by being saved. We're in Christ by, by faith. It's like that famous verse. I've met so many Christians who will tell me Galatians 2.20 is their favorite verse. Galatians 2.20 says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's what he's talking about when he says, in the Lord. Jesus is inside of you. You're in Christ, and Christ is in you. It speaks of that relationship, how you're with Jesus. You've been crucified with Christ, yet you live. Christ lives inside of you, and it happens by faith. Everybody gets saved by 
faith. What about in the Old Testament? The Bible says that Abraham believed in the Lord and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham was saved by faith. In the New Testament, Nicodemus is talking to Jesus and Jesus says, For God so loved the world, Nicodemus, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We get in Christ by being saved, by putting our faith and trust in Christ. You remember the great story, and I quote it all the time because it's so clear. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas are are down in the dungeon. They're down in the the depths of the prison. And and the jailer crawls out to them and says, hey down there, hey, uh, what must I do to be saved? How can I become a Christian? I mean, you talk about the direct question. How can a man be born again? What must I do to be saved? And what does Paul say to him? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Acts 16 and verse 31. By faith, that's how we get in Christ. That unique truth right there. The only way of salvation. The way that you get in Christ and Christ gets in you. It's not the church. The church is important. It's not the ordinances. The ordinances are important. It's not those other things. They're all well and good once you get saved. But blessed are the dead who what die in the Lord. And how did you get in the Lord? We all got in the Lord the same way. Whenever we lived, wherever we lived, it doesn't matter. We're getting the Lord by faith, by trusting Jesus, by coming to that point in our lives. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter how old you are. By coming to that point in our lives where we realize I'm a sinner. Jesus is the Savior. And we ask Jesus to save us. We call upon the name of the Lord and ask the Lord to forgive us. Ask the Lord to save us. So we see a unique truth. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. How's somebody getting the Lord? For by grace are you saved through faith. Ephesians 2 and verse 8. But then look on to the next point. So we see the unique truth in the Lord. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. But then in the middle part of the verse, we see the urgency. Now look what it says. It says... Acts 4, or excuse me, Revelation 14, 13. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor, their labors. The Bible says one day there's coming a time. One, there will be a day that we'll rest from our labors. Now that word labors is the, if you look it up, it's the Greek word uh, kopos, K O P. OS. It's an interesting word. It's translated different ways. Five times in the Bible, kopos is translated trouble. And we face a lot of trouble in this earth, don't we? In this world. The world, the flesh, and the devil. I mean, the, the, it's true. The Bible says in the book of Job, man that is born of woman is of a few days and full of trouble. There's going to come a day when all our troubles will cease. There'll come a day there will be no more whatever troubles you're facing. Financial, uh, health difficulties, family difficulties, whatever. There's going to come a day that will rest from our troubles. That's true. But that's not what it's talking about. Sometimes that word kobos, actually one time it's translated weariness. I thought about peace in the valley. You know, I'm tired and I'm weary. That song. Sometimes we feel like that. Sometimes we get so tired. And sometimes we just get so weary. This old world beats us down. And we just feel like quitting. One day we'll rest from all our troubles and all our weariness. That's true. But that's not what the verse is talking about. Both those things are true. The word labor, kopos, can mean regular work. Regular labor. When I was a boy, like many of you, Labor Day was just another. We might not have had school, but we still had to go to the fields. But there's going to come a day, Rayburn, I told you I was pointing at you, there won't be no cutting the back in heaven, will it? I mean, there'll come a day we'll rest from all manual labor. We'll rest from all labor, from all work. That's true. But look, context is king. What's it talking about? What's the very next phrase say in that verse? Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord that they may rest from their labors and their works 
do follow them. It's talking about the work, the labor we do for Jesus. That's what it's talking about. All those other things are true. One day we'll rest from all trouble, all weariness, all manual labor. But especially one day there's going to come a time we won't have to work for Jesus anymore. This is the verse I, I referenced earlier. John 9 and verse 4. Jesus said this in John 9 and verse 4. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when men can work no more. Right now, now's the time. That's why I said this was an urgency. Now's the time to labor. One day, there'll be no more work for Jesus. Uh, I think about that great hymn. I didn't sing this hymn growing up in church. But Brother Scott, I've told you many times I learned it at Mount Pisgah. Uh, but you, uh, we sing it here sometimes. But I think about that famous hymn. And I enjoyed it. It says, O land of rest, for thee I sigh. When will the moment come when I shall lay my armor by? And dwell in peace at home. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It says we'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. And then we'll be gathered home. That's what he's saying. Now, right now, there's an urgency. One day, where there will be no more work for Jesus in heaven, there'll be nobody else to get saved. There'll be nobody else to, to be matured in the faith. Nobody else to grow spiritually. We'll know as we're known. But right now, now there's an urgency. Jesus said right now, why it's day. One day it'll be night. One day there'll be no more work to do. But right now, there's an urgency to work for Jesus. We'll work till Jesus comes. Sometimes you talk to people, and, and I've had people tell me, they'll say, well, Brother Ben, you talk about serving the Lord, you talk about working for Jesus. Nobody's ever asked me to do anything. Nobody's ever asked me to work for the Lord. But here's the thing, God already has. Can you imagine saying, well, I never got asked to pray. The Bible's already asked you to pray. The Bible says when you pray, Pray like this. God had not got to ask you to pray. He's already told you to pray. God had not got to ask you to, to give your tithes and offerings. The Bible says, bring ye all the tithes and offerings into the storehouse. God's already asked you. God had not got to ask you to, to live a, a godly life. He's already called you and asked you to be holy. God had not got to ask you to come to church. He's already told you in the Bible, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And God does not got to ask you to serve the Lord. He's already told you in the Bible, serve the Lord with gladness. So don't ever say, well, I was never asked. God's already asked you. Well, all us we need to do is look around. God's given us all different gifts and different talents. God calls us to do different things. Look at your gifts and your talents. What are you good at? Every one of us are good at something. Some people have the ability to sing really well. Not everybody does. Man, sing for the Lord like Brother Thomas and Miss Christina did. Some can play an instrument, play for the glory of God. Some love to help out with kids or, or babies, serving children's church. Or Look around, there's so many. If you're good at fixing things, man, be a blessing and, and fix things. At the, there's so many things you can do. Look at what you're good at. Look at where there's a need at. Look at what you have a burden for and serve the Lord. With gladness. There's an urgency that we might work for Jesus. There are so many people that are out of church, even here in the Bible Belt. And I know it's far worse in other areas of the country. But I want to tell you, you'd be amazed. And I'm not just talking about because it's a holiday weekend and it's raining. On the best days of the week, on the best Sundays, on the holidays, you'd be amazed how many folks in Graves County and Callaway County and Marshall County ain't going to anybody's church. You went to school with them. You work with them. You're kin to a lot of them. The fields are white unto harvest. Now there's an urgency. One day we're going to rest from our labors. One day we won't invite anybody else to church. One day we won't have to share the gospel. One day we won't have to work for Jesus. But now we do. Night's coming one day. But now it's day we work the works of Him who sent us. Called us. So there's an urgency. Let's just do something for Jesus. Again, we don't all do the same thing. But what would happen if we all did something? If every Sunday there's people praying, every Sunday there's people inviting people to church, if every Sunday we've all got that attitude, I want to be involved somewhere, that's a church that God will bless. That's a church that will go forward for the Lord. So there's an urgency. 
Then this last one may be the best truth. Revelation 14, 13. There's the unforeseen fact. The unforeseen fact. The last part of that verse says, and their works do follow them. Our works follow us to heaven. The things you do for Jesus here on this earth, the things I do for Jesus, they follow us to glory. You might want to write in the margin here, and I'll give you a verse for each one of these. You might want to write in the margin 1 Corinthians 3. There in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 12 and 13, it talks about gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. And it goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 13, Every man's work shall be made manifest. Every man's work shall be revealed. God notices what we do. Now the things we do, God doesn't notice You know how nice of a car we have. That doesn't matter. That's wood, hay, and stubble. God doesn't notice how big of a home, how much money you got in the bank, the clothes you wear. None of those things. The things of this earth, they're things that don't matter. There's temporal things, even things that are good. But the, the, the gold, silver, and precious stones, those are the spiritual things. Those are the things that count for eternity. Those are the things you do for Jesus. They're the Christian works, our labor for Jesus. And the Bible says they'll be remembered. In that next verse in 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 14, it says, If any man's work abide, he shall receive a reward. Now we've just got glimpses of this. People say, what are we going to be doing in heaven? I don't know, the Bible speaks of eating in heaven, the marriage supper of the Lamb. The Bible speaks of singing in heaven, the choir. The Bible speaks of fellowshipping with one another. Uh, It's going to be better than you can imagine. But one of the things we'll do in heaven, the Bible says rewards will be handed out. If His work abides, He'll receive a reward. God's going to give rewards for everything we did for Jesus. Not for the things on this earth, they don't matter. But everything anybody did for Jesus, rewards, the Bible calls them crowns, they'll be handed out. And Revelation chapter 4 says, every one of us, we won't march around heaven with those crowns, those rewards. This is where we get that hymn, crown him with many crowns. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 4, we'll take those crowns God has given us and every one of us will lay them at the feet of Jesus. It's all because of him. We'll give them back to the Lord in love and worship and honor for who he is. But the thing that's interesting, our works follow us. How many times have you ever felt like nobody notices what I'm doing? Preacher, I helped out at church and nobody told me thank you. Preacher, I've taught this Sunday school class forever and and, and nobody's ever told me I appreciate you. Preacher, I've I've played an instrument, I I sang, I I, I taught Sunday school, I taught children's church, I helped out in the nursery, I delivered a meal, I visited somebody in the hospital, I did this, I did that. Nobody ever told me thank you. Nobody ever noticed what I did. We all feel like that from time to time, don't we? But this verse should encourage you. Because I want to tell you, the Bible says that God is all-knowing. The Bible says God is omnipotent. He's everywhere. He knows everything, omnipresent. He has all power. God knows what you do. God notices the things you do for Jesus. Even if nobody else notices, the preacher may not have noticed. Uh, The people, your family members may not have noticed. But I want to tell you, God notices. God knows what you're doing. And the Bible says your works follow you to heaven. W.A. Criswell, that great preacher, one day, at one time he pastored the largest church in the world, First Baptist Dallas, Texas. And Criswell was preaching and he told a story about a man who when they were passing the offering plate, the man put his offering in the offering plate and he said, I'll, and he said it real loud, people can hear him. He said, I'll see you in heaven. And he dropped that offering in the offering plate. And people looked at him like he was crazy. What do you mean I'll see you in heaven? And finally after the service, uh, the preacher and others went up to him and said, What do you mean? I'll see you in heaven. And he said, I'll tell you what I mean. Some of that that money I put in the offering plate, it was used to pay the light bill at the church where we could have service. The preacher could preach the word of God and people could be helped. Some of that money went to missionaries who are all across the world telling folks about Jesus. Some of it was used for Sunday school literature so boys and girls can learn about the Bible and learn about Jesus. Some of it was used to help the preacher go out and tell folks about Jesus. It was used for good works. And the Bible says our works 
will follow us to heaven. I don't understand it all, but that's what the Bible says. Everything we do for Jesus, God notices, and our works will follow us to the other side. And let me tell you, you never know. You know, sometimes we feel like, well, I did something for Jesus, it didn't have any effect. And sometimes even on this side, we'll say, well, I invited somebody to church and they didn't come. Or, you know, I, I tried to share the gospel with somebody and they didn't get saved. Preacher, I, I just, you know, I, I'm just not sure about all this. Well, number one, God notices. God notices every time you do something. But you never know what will happen because of that. You know, back in 1988, I've told somebody this story. And I wish one of my regrets... When 11-year-old Ben in Todd County was asked by the old one-eyed preacher, E.C. Dockery, there in the forum in between service on Sunday morning and Sunday night, if I was a Christian. And the Lord used that, just me and him out there, out in the yard. And he asked me, Ben, are you a Christian? And God used that to start conviction. I don't think I'd ever been convicted before that. But God used that to start conviction in my heart. It wasn't long after that the church called a pastor, but the EC was just our interim, and he went to another church. And that next year, 12-year-old Ben put his faith and trust in Jesus. And I wish a few years after that, Brother EC Dockery died. And I wish I could have gone up to him and saw him. I wish after I started preaching, I could have went up to him and shook his hand and gave him a hug and said, Brother Dockery, I, I, I can't thank you enough for how when you was just me and you out there in the front yard on the Blue Hole Road, you asked me. If I was a Christian, God used that. But I want to tell you something. He knows now. He knows now. Our works follow us to heaven. And those things he did for the Lord, him asking me if I was a Christian, that work followed him to glory. The things we do for Jesus, they count. One day, it'll be a Christian labor day. One day, we'll rest from all trouble, all weariness, all manual labor, all work for Jesus. But it's not that day yet, is it? Right now, we'll work till Jesus comes. Christian, don't, don't get weary. You keep on serving Jesus. You keep on being faithful. Whatever God is calling you to do, invite people to come to church. Pray. Be that light and be that salt. Don't give up on people. You keep on working for Jesus. Work in the church. The church is the pillar and ground of the truth. The church, uh, the Bible says, is where God receives glory. Find a place in the local church. Get in the church. Join the church. Serve God through a New Testament church. But it all starts, doesn't it, with salvation. Blood before water. Christ before the church. Christ before service. And so if you've been saved, you get in a church, you join a church, you serve Jesus. But if you've never been saved, that's the beginning, isn't it? That's where it starts. How's a person get saved again? By faith. By realizing, I know I'm a sinner, but I know that Jesus is the Savior. I believe Jesus died and He rose again. He died not for Himself. He died for me. He died for you. He can save you. Jesus, I want you to save me. Jesus, I'm asking you the best way I know how to forgive me of my sins to come into my life and to save me. That's how a person gets saved. You can do it at home. You can do it here during the invitation. You can do it after church. The important thing is that you do it, that you put your faith and trust in Jesus. Christian, keep on serving. You serve in the church. But friend, if you've never been saved, today can be the day of salvation. Cry out to Jesus. You can be saved today. Let's pray. Father, we